Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. So one of the most common pattern adjustments that I'm sure a lot of us have had to tackle from time to time is grading between sizes. Now that can happen whether you're making a top, a dress, skirt, pants, really any garment. If you are uh, falling in different size categories in your bust or your waist or your hip, then you're gonna want to grade out your side seams. And it is super, super simple to do. All you need to do, and I'm gonna use this purple pen to help us see what's going on here. But all you need to do is say, for example, okay, so I am going to be a size 20 in the waist, which is this line here, and I'm going to be a 22 in the hip. Now the hip is indicated by where this uh, little bullseye is. So if you want to take your, your big clear ruler like this, and you would line it up with the center front because that's on the fold, that's your grain line. You know that that is perpendicular to your body and you move it on up to where that little bullseye is, keeping this lined up and then this lined up. And then now you know that this is your hip line. This is where the widest part of your body will be. And you can kind of see that because that's where it grades out a little bit. But anyway, so now you know that at this point, I need to be at a 22. So you can take a curvy ruler like the one from Stitch Buzz and easily grade between those two sizes. You simply take the ruler and follow it around its curve. Let's move you guys to the middle a little bit more. Move it around its curve, however, much or little, you see how the curve is getting more and more deep the more uh, round you go. So you kind of follow it around until magically those two points line up. And you can tell that this one's gonna kind of follow the um, curve of the original pattern pretty well. It's just going to dip in ever so slightly along the line. Perfect. And so now whenever you cut out your pattern piece, you'll cut out this line and you will have a size 20 at your waist and a size 22 at your hip. Another common pattern adjustment is something called a full seat adjustment. You are only going to do a full seat adjustment on bottom pattern. So pants, skirts, culottes, things like that. And I almost universally always do a full seat adjustment just because I know for my body, the circumference of my hip, a lot of that sits in the back. So I tend to not grade the front pattern piece too, too much. I'll do like maybe one size. And then in the back, I'll grade between the sizes and do a full seat adjustment to allow for that extra volume in the bum. So it's super, super simple to do. You will need to take your long ruler again, and you can see we've got our bullseye to mark our hip uh, line. So you're gonna line up the grain line with one of the marks and then line up the center of the bullseye with another one of the marks. And this time you are going to draw the line all the way across, like so. That is your hip line. You also need to mark the two uh, seam lines. So along your waist, or I'm sorry, along your side, and this is the super cool seam allowance ruler from Stitch Buzz. It is exactly 5 eighths of an inch wide. So I love it because you can just throw it down and mark that little mark. Same thing on this side. Throw it down and mark that little mark. And then you're going to draw in a little circle here. And that's to ensure that you don't cut through your 
stitching line. And all you're gonna do is take some scissors and you are gonna cut all the way through this line up until the edge of that circle. Perfect. So I haven't gone to the stitching line, just to the edge of the circle. I'm gonna rotate this around and I'm gonna cut from the other side, the other raw edge to the other edge of the circle. Being very careful not to cut through that circle. And this allows us to have a better pivot. So, cause you can see the paper is separating right here as well. So what we are going to do now is we are going to create a little bit of a wedge where this is going to rotate up and down and the and the more the deeper the wedge the bigger the full seat adjustment so if you've got like a cardi b situation <laughs> going on down there you're going to need a larger wedge i tend to never go more than I mean, certainly never more than an inch, somewhere between half an inch to uh, three quarters of an inch would probably be plenty for most people. All right, and then you're going to slide this little guy under here, doo, 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 like so, just till it gets past the other edge like this. Okay, so you've got your grain line on, I love using gridded cutting mats because then you can make sure everything's lined up. So you've got your grain line lined up. That's perfectly straight. Just put a little tape on your hemline so that that doesn't move around. Okay, because we don't want this bottom piece to move. We only want to move the top piece. So now we are going to take, this is the six inch ruler from Stitch Buzz. You can also use this one again if you would like, but we are going to do a half inch uh, full seat adjustment. Let's tape down our adjustment paper strip thing just so it doesn't move around. Okay, so now we've got everything that we don't want to move not moving. All right, so you need to measure up uh, half, what did we say, half an inch from your, um, the line that you cut. And you don't need to do it all the way across. You just need to do it along the stitching line. So I'll go past the raw edge and a little bit past the stitching line just to make sure I've got it nice and covered there. Why does it look a quarter of an inch? It is. This is half an inch. This is half an inch. <laughs> My bad. Okay, here we go, here we go. And if I make a mistake like that, I just put little X's through it. That reminds me, that's not the one you wanted. Okay, so now this little sliver of paper is going to line up at the stitching line. So it's like a millimeter away from the raw edge, but the stitching line here is what is touching that new measurement, that half inch line that we made. All right, now don't cut all of this away just yet. We need to true up these seams. You can see here that there's a nice big gap along the cutting line. So again, you're going to take your curvy ruler and you are going to line that up with your original cutting line and you're going to draw that in. So this overlaps, you can barely, barely tell because we've only done an itty bitty one. But if you look really closely, those are not creating a nice smooth edge. So again, take your curvy ruler, place it over and draw in that new cutting line like so. Take down the raw edges of the paper and can you I don't know if you guys can even tell it's like of the littlest bit but the littlest bit matters in sewing as we all know okay cool so this is a full seat adjustment you have created um, some extra room for your little bum 
And another good way to know if you need a full seat adjustment is if when you make a skirt or a dress um, or pants and you notice that the hem in the back is shorter than the hem in the front, more than likely you need a full seat adjustment. And now we've got our beautiful new skirt with a half inch full seat adjustment. Another really fun adjustment to do is to add width to the hem of a skirt, top, pants. If you have like stovepipe legs and you want flare legs or you have a slim skirt and you want a full skirt, same thing if you have a slim fitting top and you want it to be a little bit more boxy, you can add some width at the hem, super simple. You just need to take your long clear ruler like this one and you are going to line it up with the grain line and then you're gonna put the edge of the ruler right smack dab in the middle of your pattern's dart. Assuming there is a dart, if you're doing like a top or something that doesn't have a dart, you're just gonna be eyeing a, uh, a third or a half, however many of these you're going to be adding. You can add a whole bunch of them. Like if you were taking a sleeve that was like a regular fitted sleeve and you wanted it to be a flutter sleeve, you would add a whole bunch of these wedges, like three or five of them. If, cause you don't want to spread this like 10 inches. <laughs> you only want to spread it a little bit at a time. So if you have a pattern piece like a sleeve or like a top that doesn't have a dart as a reference point, you're going to be doing right down the middle. You're going to be doing each of the third sectors, so on and so forth. Okay, so once you do that, then you draw a line all the way down like so. Then you wanna measure your hem. This one takes a quarter of an inch hem, which is one and a quarter, which is right there. So this is where your hem will be. And you want to slice all the way up through this dart until you get to the seam line, which is right around there and you're gonna take it right to the edge of that circle again, flip it around and cut from the other edge to the other edge of the circle. So this is looking very similar to what we might have already done here at this point. Now you're going to line up that line that you just cut with uh, one of the grid lines on your cutting mat. Now, if you want to do, if you want to make your skirt more A-line and you want to make it one inch wider, you're going to pull these apart by one, a half an inch on each side. So you scoot this one out to half an inch, you scoot this one out to half an inch, like so, then tape down your corners so they don't move like so, and you can see it's created this little wedge all the way through the pattern. Okay, now you need to take your curvy ruler and you need to true up your hemline. Like so, now we've cleared that area. You need to true up your dart. And with that, we have basically split open our little dart legs. So we need to put in our little dot for the end of the dart and redraw the dart legs. Like so, and now we have brand new dart legs that we will trace off onto our pattern piece. We also can hold this stuff in place a little bit better now that we've got our hem done. And we can true up our, the tip of our dart. And truing up the dart really just means that that little teeny tiny point that, that is at the top of your dart is going to lay 
like when you cut out this little shape from your fabric, that it is going to lay flat when you press it to the side. So you go along the middle of your dart. A little hard to do with all the paper and tape, but it can be done. And then get your dart legs and then fold it over as if the dart were sewn into place. All right, perfect. When you cut through all of that and then open this back out, you have a true dart at that point. Okay, now we can cut our hem. There is a back skirt with a half inch full seat adjustment and a one inch width added to your hem for a more A-line skirt. So every once in a while, you'll come across a pattern that was drafted with a very large arm size. And when you put it on, your bra strap shows when you raise your arm up. I know we've all been there. There also have been times where there's been an itsy bitsy teeny weeny arm size, and like you can barely move your arm because the fabric is so up in your armpit. So this is going to be the adjustment that you're going to use to raise or lower your arm side. So first things first, and I'm sure you're uh, putting together a little lovely little thing that we've got here, but we start with our big ruler and we are going to line it up with our fold line or our center back, whichever, or if there's a grain line, you're going to do that as well. And we are going to draw a line halfway along your uh, arm side. The line goes across like so, cut through this entire line, all the way, one edge to the other. Okay, perfect, now we have two parts, and this is how we're going to make it smaller or larger, depending on what you need. Okay, so we are gonna make ours shorter. We can take our back pattern piece like so and tape it down on one side just to make sure it's nice and smooth, and I've got it lined up with one of our grid lines on our cutting mat. And then take another piece and we are going to overlap these like so by half an inch. You can tell that there's like a little bit of a bump and we want to remove that. So we are gonna take our trusty Kirby ruler, again, kind of a theme, and we are going to try and rotate this around, there we go, so that we can trim off that little itty bitty piece of paper. So hold this down and true up this seam line. And you can see we're trimming off this little sliver of paper. beautiful little arm side that you've got there. So that's how you shorten it. If you needed to lengthen it, you would do the opposite adjustment. Okay, another common adjustment for bodices is to adjust the neckline, either raising it or lowering it, or even changing the shape of it completely from a rounded neckline to a bateau neckline to a V neckline, whatever you wanted to do. This is a bodice back that has a scoopier neckline that I want to be more smoothed out, less scoopy and higher up. Obviously, if this were the bodice front pattern piece, the same adjustments could be made. You just wanna think about how you want your front neckline to look versus how you want your back neckline to look. So we are going to take some of our paper here and we are going to line up our center back with one of the grid lines on our uh, cutting mat. Put down a little piece of paper or tape and then you're gonna tape down the shoulder seam as well. So I would like to raise my neckline by two inches. Again, that's completely subjective. You can do whatever you want. I have already drawn in the stitching line. Ignore this. 
um, for the shoulder and the neckline itself. And I am going to measure from that stitching line to our new stitching line, which is two inches higher. And then I'm going to measure five eighths of an inch above that for our new cutting line along the back. Now, you also need to note the intersection of the shoulder seam and the neckline. This is called the high point shoulder. And the high point shoulder shouldn't, it's its own adjustment. If you want to widen the shoulders or narrow the shoulders, that's up to you. That's a different adjustment. We're going to assume that we still want the high point shoulder to be a little bit wider. You can tell it's a little bit further away from the center back than say a closer one would be. So we are going to maintain that because we still want this beautiful side of our neck to be part of our design and how we want our garment to look in the end. So we are going to maintain that and we are going to measure using our curvy ruler we are going to rotate her around from the high point shoulder until we get to that line that we made and again we're doing uh, stitching line to stitching line all right and because ours is a little bit wider we're rotating around a lot if we had a uh a deeper set high point shoulder, like let's say it was, I don't know, here, then you can tell we'd have like a scoopier back neckline. So it just depends on that. And again, I'm assuming you've muslined this so you would know what, how much wiggle room you had with your high point shoulder. But again, we're keeping ours the exact same place because we like that. All right, and then you were going to draw in your new stitching line for your neckline. And she looks like that. Now we need to draw in our new uh, cutting line. And this is also by Stitch Buzz, their seam allowance curve ruler. So this is five eighths of an inch wide. It just makes it super simple to kind of come in here, line up your uh, curve that you made, something like that and draw in your new cutting line like so. And there is our brand new neckline. Hopefully you have enjoyed this master tutorial covering a wide variety of common uh, pattern adjustments. If you guys have any questions, please check the description box first. I will have information in there like where you can get all of these amazing tools, including the Kirby ruler um, from Stitch Buzz. I also have a coupon code for Stitch Buzz, so that will be in the description box as well. And if your question was not answered there, check. Um, please feel free to leave a comment. And I think that's it for today's Tuesday too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.